So quiz 4.5, number one, we'll solve this by going uh, clear, clear, cosine of 2x. Okay. Uh, negative 2 over x. Does one of you need to borrow a graphing calculator? Oh, got it. Do you need one? Oh, you got one? Oh, there we go. Uh, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi. Uh, you know what? I think this window will work. If not, I'll just make it bigger. Oh, that looks pretty good. Uh, how many answers? Two. First one, second function, calculate, intersection. First curve, second curve, guess. First one is at 4.177. And the second one is second function, calculate, intersection. First curve, second curve. Guess. Oh, drop my pen. 5.304. Is that right, folks? You know what I forgot to do? Forgot to make sure I was in radians. Oh, no, wait a minute. The, the cosine graph looked okay, so I must be in radians. Solve the following algebraically, and my trigger phrase, exact solutions, means probably special triangles, and there's a two-period change. <coughs> I refuse to deal with a period change. Nuh uh I'm going to say this, though. The period is 2 pi over 2, or just plain old pi. But I'm going to let a equal 2x temporarily. I'm going to solve sine of a equals negative 1 over root 2. And when I use my cast rule, sine is negative. Why? Sine is negative here and here. Um, oh, it's the 1, 1, root 2 triangle. 1, 1, root 2 triangle, where this angle here has a sine of 1 over root 2 and a cosine of 1 over root 2. And this angle here is, count it, pi by 4. So that means that this angle is pi by 4, and that means that this angle is pi by 4 which means my whole angle is, uh, let's see, my first a value is 5 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4, and my second a value is 7 pi by 4. But of course, I'm not done. They wanted me to actually find x. To get x, I think I would divide the a by 2 to get the x by itself. I think, as it turns out, my first x value is 5 pi by 8, and my second x value is 7 pi by 8. And my period is pi, or 8 pi by 8. So I can find extra answers. Let's see. x3 is going to be add 8 pi by 8 to 3, add the period to 3, to 5 pi by 8, sorry, 13 pi by 8, which is less than 2 pi. Is there an x4? Probably, because usually there's four answers when there's a 2 there. 7 pi by, uh, 15 pi by 8, which is also less than 2 pi. Is there a fifth answer? No, when I add the period to that, I'm bigger than 2 pi. I'm bigger than 16 pi by 8. You know what? To keep it simple today on the quiz, now on the test, if you didn't get all four, I'd give you lots of part marks. But this is a quiz, four answers, four marks. How about one mark per answer? Unos, dos, tres, cuatro. Now, on your test, if you didn't get this far, you'd still get marks for some of this. I have a different marking scheme, but it's a quiz. I'll mark harder so you find the test easier. Easier. Give the general solution. Well, it's going to be the first angle, 5 pi by 8, as well as the second angle, 7 pi by 8. And we're going to take both of those, and we're going to add multiples of the period where n is an integer. And you could have written 8 pi by 8 there as well, but I just didn't feel like it. Number three, I started to panic because I saw two trig functions and I went, what, does he want us to plug in an identity? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Duke. What's the first thing that I always, 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 always check for? There is a greatest common factor. 
when I saw that, I went, boy, am I sure glad that I learned that the first thing that I always, always, always check for is a GCF. Otherwise, I could have been really floundering for like 10 or 15 minutes before I spotted that. I might not have finished the test. Hint. 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 Anyways, uh, factor out a secant. And I get root 3 cosecant plus 2 equals 0. So I said, okay, I guess this is going to break into two factors. The first one says secant x equals 0. And the second one says cosecant x equals negative 2 over root 3. I don't deal with secant. Secant goes with uh, cosine. Now this is kind of weird. This is saying cos x equals 1 over 0 because i got to flip both sides. So if I flip a 0, it would become a 1 over 0. Oh, was that from next door? That wasn't the phone? I thought I heard a phone for a second there. I was like, oh, I've been on a roll. I've, we had two on Friday. Great. Um, what's the answer here? Tyler? No solution, undefined, or even just crossed it out. Or if you crossed out this, because some of you may remember the secant graph, the lowest the secant graph gets is 1 or negative 1. Remember, it had that weird range. It never touches 0. You could also have just crossed out there as well. I would have taken that. But yeah, no solution. A little sneaky, Mr. Duick. Uh, what about here? I don't deal with cosecant. I'm going to solve sine x equals negative root 3 over 2. C A S T Y. Sine is negative there and there. Why? This looks like the 1, 2, root 3 triangle, where this angle up there has a sine of root 3 over 2. Why? As a reference angle, that's pi by 3. Pi by 3. So we're going to get this. x1 equals 4 pi by 3, is that right? And x2 equals 5 pi by 3, is that right? Okay. I would probably say one mark if you got this, one mark for that answer, one mark for that answer, and one mark for cluing in it was no solution over here. Something like that. I don't know. That's kind of cool. A no solution reciprocal. Ooh. Turn the page. All right, a lovely quadratic trig. Now, some of you are still having trouble factoring some of these, and that's fine. I've given you my using the force guessing method, but now I'm going to take it one little step further. You see, Kyle, when I look at this, it could be a 2 and 2, or it could be a 4 and a 1. But here's what I notice. What's 4 times 5? What's the middle term? Those are close enough. I bet you I want the 4 and 1 sticking around. How'd you figure that out? You just do a gazillion of these, and you start to spot patterns. In fact, I'm 99% sure that it's going to be 4, 4 x, Mr. Duick. How about 4 cos x, Mr. Duick? And 1 cos x. And I think I want to have a positive 5 there and a minus 1 there. And don't forget, always drop down the equals zero. That way you have a full equation. Trust me, you'll make, you'll make less sloppy mistakes. I get uh, cos x equals negative 5. And I get cos x equals 1 quarter. What can you tell me about this side? Now... Again, on your test, one of your quadratics will have solutions on both sides. I won't do everyone like this, but I will tell you on your test, at least one of them won't have solutions on one of the sides. Will you give us one that has no solutions on both sides? Probably not on a test, although, Dylan, it's nerdly cool. All I'd be testing then is can you factor it. I'm really testing can you solve it, not just factor it. Hey, do I have a triangle with a 1 and a 4 in it? 
Oh, that's why they said uh, give your answer to three decimal places. Okay. Uh, C, A, S, T. It is positive one quarter, which means cosine is positive there and there. I'm going to find the reference angle by going inverse cosine of one quarter. I am in radians. Inverse cosine of one quarter. And I get a reference angle of 1.318. Making sure I wrote that down right. I did. So I guess that means my first x value is 1.318. And my second x value is 2 pi minus 1.318, which is 2 pi minus the previous answer I had on my calculator, 4.965. If you got that, you get 4 out of 4. Otherwise, I would probably do something like this. One mark for that, one mark for that, one mark for crossing that puppy out. And I'd probably give you one mark if I saw, like, the cast rule reference angle thingy. Number five. Solve tan. Okay. Er, oh, never mind. Uh, tan. Tan x. Tan x. Uh, numbers that multiply to 5 and add to 6. Oh, plus 5 plus 1. So tan plus 1, tan plus 5. So I get tan x equals negative 1. And tan x equals negative 5. Now, if this was cosine or sine, I would do this. But it's tangent, ugly cousin. As it turns out, tangent does have a range of all reals. This will have a solution. Now, this one here, if you did this as a decimal, that's fine. But believe it or not, this is actually an exact value because it's negative 1 over 1. And I do have a triangle with two 1s in it. The 1, 1, root 2 triangle. So I'm going to do this as an exact value. You can then make it a decimal if you did it as a decimal because I didn't say you had to. Tangent is negative there and there. This is the one, uh, boy, Mr. Dewick, make a triangle. This is the 1, 1, root 2 triangle, where that angle there has a tangent of 1 over 1. So my reference angle is pi by 4, pi by 4, and I get x1 equals 3 pi by 4, and x2 equals 7 pi by 4. Over here, C, A, S, T. I also get tangent is negative, which is also there and there. But here I'm going to find the reference angle by going inverse tan of 5, not negative 5, of 5. Inverse tan of 5. And I get 1.3734. One point three seven three four, which means that angle and that angle are both one point three seven three four. Means I think the first angle x three I'll call it is pi minus pi. Oh, let's try that again. Pi minus one point three seven three four. I get one point seven six eight. Is that right? And my second angle is going to be 2 pi minus. Two pi minus one point three seven three four. I guess I could have just got a second function. Anyways. Uh four point nine one zero if I round off properly. Four point nine one zero, yes, I think. Yeah, that'll become a... Sh 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 yep. Do we have to have a zero there? No, but I did because it's three decimal places. How many answers? Four? How many marks? Four? That works. Give the general solution. Well, there's that guy. 
and there's this guy. Now, if you wrote also x2 and x4, that's fine. But as it turns out, by the way, tangent, what's the period of tangent? Ugly cousin. If you add pi n, where n is an integer, to these two, this one will generate that one, and this one will generate that one. But if you wrote them in, that's fine as well. Could you give yourself a lovely score out of 19, please? And then pass them inwards. Turn to page 359. It's lesson, I think, 8. I've skipped lesson 7 temporarily. I'm also doing something a little bit weird. Normally, I've started out each day by saying, hey, any identities questions you want me to go over? I'm going to be actually taking questions from homework or from big review after. Good news is it's a short lesson today. I'm going to be showing you a couple of new rules, and then you're going to have the rest of the class to just whittle away at this stuff. And you want to have your calculators handy. We're not going to be using a whole bunch just at the very beginning here. And you want to make sure you're in radians. And here's what we're going to ask. This statement right here, don't highlight it because it's false. I'm just highlighting it so you can see what we're talking about. We're asking, Jesse, is this true? What we're really asking is, can you pull a 2 from inside the sign outside to the front? Is the sine of 2 theta the same as just going sine theta and double your answer? It says determine whether or not the statement can be verified using theta equals pi by 6. So here's what we're going to try and do. Let's get our calculator out. And making sure we're in radians. We're going to go the sine of 2 times pi by 6. That's the 2 theta. That's the left-hand side. Enter. And that's what I get as a decimal. And I'm going to compare that with going 2 times the sine of pi by 6. And the question I have for you is, are they the same? Oh, are they the same? No. Turns out we cannot, we cannot pull something from inside the trig function to the front. Well, then here's the next question. What is the sine of 2 theta the same as? Now, there is a fairly easy proof, but I can only do the fairly easy proof after next day's lesson, because I'm doing lesson 8 ahead of lesson 7, because I think it works better. The only way it doesn't work better is I use lesson 7 to prove lesson 8. So we'll just have to hold off on the proof. I'm just going to give it to you. As it turns out, whenever you see the sine of 2 theta, you can replace that with 2 sine theta cos theta, which is, oh, hey, get out your pink identity sheet and your hints for proving identities. Unless you got them all memorized. If you got them all memorized, then you don't need to get them out. And I think about one third of the way down on the right hand side, Justine, you do see sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay? So if I'm doing an identity, one of those t table thingies, and they give me a sine 2 theta, you know what I replace it with? 2 sine theta cos theta. Oh, and you know what the cosine of 2 theta is? The cosine of 2 theta is cos squared minus sine squared. It is. But do you notice that next to cos 2 theta, it doesn't just have one answer, Ian, on your formula sheet? How many answers does it have? Go find cos 2 theta. How many possibilities are there for cos 2 theta, actually? Three. Okay. This is the original. But because cos squared equals 1 minus sine squared, if you plug that in right there, you'll get, I think you have one identity with a 2 sine squared in it. It's 1 minus 2 sine squared. Oh, and because sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared, if you plug that one into there with brackets, because there's a negative in front, you distribute the brackets, uh, you get these two. So there are three choices. There are three choices to replace cosine of 2 theta with. Which one's the right answer? All of them. But one of them will always be better than the other two. And so this is where I always try and do a little bit of the math in my head to see 
Oh, does some nice stuff cancel here? No. Try the other double angle identity for cosine. Does some nice stuff cancel here? No. I'll try the other one. Oh, nice stuff cancels. Specifically, if in my identity I have a positive one, I probably plug in this so that the positive one minus the one would cancel. Or if in my identity I have a minus one, I'd probably go with this one so that the minus one plus the one would cancel ideally. But even if you pick one of them and it's not the easiest one, you'll still be fine. So those identities are on your formula sheet. They're the double angle identities. I'm not going to prove them right now. They are actually really easy to prove. It's two lines, but you have to have the sum and difference identities to do it. Let's use them. Turn the page. Page 360, number one says, use an additional identity to prove the double angle identity that the sine of 2a equals 2 sine a cos a. Oh, heck. You got your formula sheet? See the sum and difference identities? See them? Find the one that looks like this, the sine of alpha plus beta. See it there? Victoria, can you read it out to me, please? Sine of alpha plus beta equals, and read to me the right-hand side. Yep. Believe it or not, there is, remember how when you add two logs together, it's multiplying? Well, when you add two signs together, it's that. Sine of A plus A. What is A plus A in lowest terms when I gather like terms? 2A, this side. You'll get this. Sine A, cos A, plus cos A, sine A. And when you gather like terms, you'll get two sine A, cos A's. That's the proof for what it's worth. It comes out of the addition identities, which I haven't taught you yet. By the way, have you just kind of sort of figured out how to use the addition identities? You kind of find an alpha plus beta or an alpha minus beta, and depending on whether it's sine or cos, you plug in different stuff. That's next lesson. Though. Really, we want to use this. So even if you didn't get that, if you don't write that down, no big whoop. I'm not going to ask you to prove it. I'm going to ask you to use it. Example two, this is what I'm more interested in says, consider this identity. Yeah. says, describe how to use a graphing calculator. No. Well, I would graph the left side, Jesse, carefully. I would graph the right-hand side carefully. And if they're the same, how many graphs should I get on the screen? One. Mm. Prove it. OK. What is sine 2x the same as? 2 sine x cos x. And we're done on that side. Mr. Duke, aren't we supposed to start with the uglier side? Remember I said there's a science and an art to this. I noticed that on the right-hand side, I only had to do one thing and quit. So I've done the one thing and quit. Now on the left side. I have tangent sine and cosine. So I may rewrite everything in terms of sine and cos, but that denominator, that 1 plus tan squared is twigging me. Is that something from the top of your formula sheet? Oh, and that gives me, instead of a binomial yucky fraction, that gives me a single term on the bottom. You know what? I'm going to replace 1 plus tan squared with secant squared. So this is going to become 2 tan x over secant squared x. That's much nicer. Now I'm going to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cos. And you've noticed I prefer to work downwards when I can, but I haven't got much room, so I'm going to do something I hate doing. So I'm going to go sideways. I don't want to... Because tangent is... Uh, what is tangent? Sine over cos. And there's a 2 on the top because there's a 2 in the front. 2 sine x over cos x. All over? What's secant squared in terms of sine and cos? 1 over, don't forget the 1 over, 1 over cos squared. Just got my nerdy adrenaline rush because I did a little bit of math in my head. How do I divide by a fraction? I'll get 2 sine x over cos x times cos squared x over 1. 
I would say to myself, self, how many coasts is on top? Two. How many coasts on the bottom? One. How many left and where? Why, I think I'll have one single solitary coast on top. And lo and behold, there's already a two. The sign would drop down. The coast would drop down. I would smile, and I would spike the football after the touchdown. So remember that great big identities package that I gave you that has, I think, 21 identities in it or 24 or something like that? And I told you that you couldn't do any of the ones that had a 2x in them? Now you can. Oh, those are all fair game. Oh, and uh, the other question they'll sometimes ask you to do is to go backwards. And I'll show you what I mean. Example three here. Now, usually these would be multiple choice questions on a test. 3A says 2 sine 4x cos 4x, but I'm going to read that in my mind just a little bit differently. I'm going to read that as... 2 sine something cos something. On my formula sheet, do I have 2 sine something cos something? Why, yes, I do. It's the right-hand side of the sine 2x, except I'm going to then write this just a little bit differently. Right above this, I'm going to say this looks like 2 sine a cos a, except instead of an a, Erwin, what's sitting in my original question? Instead of an a, a 4x. What is 2 sine A cos A, according to my formula sheet, going backwards now? Why, that's the sine of 2A. Right, Ian? But what was A actually in my question here? Sine of 8x. 2 4x's. So this is the giving you the right-hand side of the identity and saying, go backwards. For example, I look at B. And Dylan, when I look at B, I see cos squared something minus sine squared something. I'll deal with the somethings later. But I would say to myself, self, on my sheet somewhere, do I have cos squared something minus sine squared something? Yeah. Cos of two something? What's the something? Okay, we're going to try this one without the little substitution trick. We're going to see if we can go there one step. If I heard you correctly, you said this was the cos of 2 something. Cos of 2 times a half a. Okay, what is 2 times a half times a? Just plain old a. C is really the tricky one, and unfortunately, these are the ones they love. You see, when I look at question C, I see sine something, cos something. What I don't see is 2 sine something, cos something. But Justine, on my sheet, I do have a sine something, cos something, do, do I not? Except what's in front of that sine something, cos something, the number... You know what? Can you read to me that identity? So sine of 2. Yeah. How could I make this side look a little bit more like this? What, oh pray tell, could I do with this too? Yeah? It's an uglier version of the same identity. I think this is going to be a one half in front, a sign, open bracket, a two, and then Justine, I love the way you said it. You said theta or something. Because, yeah, I'm not going to put a theta here. I'm going to put the something, which in this case is the times 5 over 2x. Psst. 
is that a fraction? Then you know what? I'm going to make this to a fraction because I think what I can really see, Alex, is it's 10 over 2. See it? And what is 10 over 2 in lowest terms? This whole thing simplifies to 1 half sine 5x. And that's a pretty tricky one to get. You can also solve equations using double angle identities. Turn the page. Oh, you can do it with a graphing calculator, but let's look at B. What's ugly about B? Two trig functions. Now, normally I would say, oh, decimal answers, graphing calculator. But ah, it says as exact values, which means apparently I can do this one by hand. And not only is it two trig functions, can you see the double angle? The 2x? Let's get rid of that. What other trig function do we have in this question? Sine. Let's get rid of the cos 2x using the identity that only has sines in it. In other words, I don't want to bring in cos squared minus sine squared. And I don't want to bring in the 2 cos squared minus 1. I think I want to bring in... 1 minus 2 sine squared. I want to rewrite this as 3 sine squared plus bracket 1. Is it 1 minus 2 sine squared? Yep. Minus 2 equals 0. Is there anything in front of the brackets at all here? By the way, whenever you substitute these in, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, though, always substitute with brackets to be very, very careful because sometimes you'll have a negative right there, which when you distribute it will make it this a minus and this a plus, and that can be important. Anyways, um, I think I get this. 3 sine squared plus negative 2 sine squared. What is 3 sine squared plus negative 2 sine squared? Or what's 3 sine squared take away 2 sine squared? 1 sine squared, or just plain old sine squared x. And then I have positive 1, take away 2. Minus 1 equals 0. Sine squared x equals 1. How would I get rid of a squared? Or, by the way, this is a quadratic. I could have also made it equal to 0, this factors. But we said, you know, remember, we just have a plain old quadratic with no middle term. We can just get the squared by itself and then square root both sides. Except when I square root both sides, what had I better remember? Plus or minus. And what's the square root of 1? Here's what I get. Sine x equals 1. Sine x equals negative 1. Ah! Alarm bell, right? 1s and negative 1s means this is not going to be cast rule. This is not going to be uh, special triangles. This is going to be either unit circle or the graph. What do you want me to use, the unit circle, or do you want me to just sketch the graph? Oh, let's sketch the graph then. Here's the sine graph that we know and love. And this is saying... When is it one high? Well, it's one high right there. Oh, it's also saying, when is it negative one high? It's negative one high right there. Can you see what my two exact value angles are going to be? What's that there? Pi by 2. And what's that there? 3 pi by 2. So that's how you could use a double angle substitution to solve a trig equation. I won't put one like that on your written, maybe multiple choice. I'll be honest. Way more like this on your multiple choice. Oh, C says, describe how to use graphs to solve that. Graph that, graph that, find where they cross, blah. Solve that, blah, forget it. We've done one, so we're going to go like this, we're going to go like this, and in fact, number one wants you to prove the double angle identities. Nah. 
two. And I'll give you one three A, one trig equation. Five. Seven. One three A five seven. And I'm almost done. So I have just given you this bad boy here, right? And you may notice if you go to the very, very end, there are lots of questions. Uh, 136 multiple choice, and then a bunch of written questions as well. And I did attach the answers to this, yes? Okay. I haven't got a handwritten answer key. I'm working on it. I'm now on number 74 and counting. This is a review of all of trig. This is not going to be me assigning every one of these questions. I'm going to tell you which ones are for trig part two. And I'll get you to circle them. I don't want you to cross out the other ones, though, because I think the other ones would be terrific provincial exam review. In other words, I would put this somewhere, and later on, once I, I'll mark, you know, give you credit for doing the trig review for the questions that I've, I've assigned. But this is going to be terrific trig review for you when we get towards the end of the year as well. So go to number one, for example. Number one is talking about the point M comma N, point of intersection. You know what? That's X, Y, and R, which is not going to be directly on this next test. So I'm not going to assign that. But that's a great review question when you're studying. Anyways, I'm going to give you some right now that you can try. So what's your homework today? Textbook. You can work on the big identities review, but I want to let you start whittling away at this because if I give this to you all over four days, I've spent so far to get to number 74. Now, I'm doing every question, but to get to number 74 so far has taken me about three hours. Well, it means it's a good review. Yeah. Two is good. Three is good. Four is good. Five will be good, but not yet. I haven't done that lesson, so we'll leave it blank for now. We'll come back and circle it later. Six is good. Hey, Mr. Duick, we did graphs last test. How come you're giving us graphing questions? Because we're going to be doing applications of graphs this test, which means this is great review for that. Um, ten. Glance at ten and tell me quickly, how will you solve that? Graphing calculator, right? Oh, and hopefully to do number 10, you would count your solutions, and if there was two, you'll cross off A and B. If there's four, you'll cross off C and D. And then hopefully you'd even be smarter. You only need to find the first one, don't you? Because if 0.49 is a solution, it's either A or C, and you'd be able to figure out whether there's four or two. If it's not 0.49, it's either B or D, and you'd get one of those answers. Start thinking cleverly. Thirteen. Fourteen. Radians to degrees as a decimal will be on this test. Because remember, your last test was completely non-calculator. This test, I'll ask you a couple of calculator questions. Hmm. Number 17 looks kind of familiar. I didn't assign it, but number 17 looks kind of familiar. Wasn't it on your last Oh, or close, something like that. Yeah, that's where I got it from. 18. What the? No, no. Look at the answers. What will you do? Okay, it's graphing calculator. Ah, but with the period change. See it? Oh, but I could figure out the general solution really quickly. What's the period of this graph? Oh, come on. Too slow. What's the period of this graph? It's 2 pi over 5, uh, which means, oh, I would do that and that right now because I'm not adding 2 pi. Okay, You're going to find on the multiple choice 
you rarely have to complete the whole question. In fact, once I, I mean, oh, by the way, I also wouldn't bother finding the first root because the first root clearly is 0 0.07, which is a waste of my time. I would right away find the second one. And in fact, it's either 5.94 or 0.56. I can probably figure out just by looking at my graph whether it's far to the right, 5.94, or close to the left, 0.59. I don't even need to solve this one, really. You'll start thinking like that, I hope. Uh, 19, but later. Ooh, double angle identity. 21 is good. 22 is good. 25 is good. 26 is good. 30 is good. 34 is a quadratic, and quadratics will be on this test. Thirty-six, thirty-nine, and I'll give you a bunch more a bit later, but if you're looking for a head start, that's what you can start working on as well. Okay? Can you scroll all the way down to the written section, which is, uh, well, find it. It's after 100, number 135. Right here. Okay. Two. Three. The written you'll have to do on a separate piece of paper. Sorry, but I was trying to conserve. I mean, this was big enough already. I had to conserve some paper. Four. Love the identity. Five. Quadratic trig. Six. Love the identity. Seven. Quadratic trig. And again, are all these due tomorrow? No. But by the time we get to the test, this is what you'll have worked on. Most, It's going to be almost all of the written. Eight is good. Nine is good. Eventually 10, but not yet because I haven't done applications. Eleven, lovely identity. Twelve, solve algebraically quadratic trig equation and a general solution. Is number 13 an identity? Man, that's fair game. How many more are there? Oh boy. Uh, did you hear Tyler? Was it Tyler? Miguel? We used to all of them to be. You'll be able to do this one. It's a quadratic trig. This one. This one. This one. This one. This one. Twenty is a word problem. I haven't done word problems with you yet. Twenty-one is a word problem. I am going to do one thing. I hate number 22. It's bad physics. And I got it I got it banned from the provincial exam in the last curriculum and I've just seen it's on the new curriculum coming up. So I got to get it banned again. It's You're assuming that energy is conserved and that there's no friction, but you haven't said that in the question. And if kids take physics, they'll assume it's friction and then it's not a trig function, it's actually a decaying function, and they'll use an exponential, and they'll get zero because they did the physics right. Sorry. Is that a lot? Yeah. Oh, well, no, because the test isn't for two weeks, and you can start whittling away at it, and I'll be giving you more, I know, along the way. But really, over the next few days, you're working on today's homework, but then it's going to be the big trig identities review. That's due the day of the test. And here is your great big trig review. Okay, now I'm officially shutting up. You got 20 minutes.